All right. Welcome, podcast family. How are you guys liking season three? Well, we have a fun and super chill episode today. This week's very special guest is Toki Monsta. We know her by Jen, our nearest and dearest homegirl, an LA native, Grammy nominated music producer, and icon in the music industry. Toki Monsta has helped define the sound of modern dance and beat music. She's worked with Anderson Pack, Kelly Rowland, and even remixed songs for Duran Duran and Beck. We're sure many of you are familiar with her genius and unique melodies. Our relationship with Jen goes beyond music. The three of us are usually gallivanting together, festival hopping, following Jen around the globe to one of her many headlining sold out shows. The years have been full of fun and our friendship throughout the years has been a beautiful ride of uplifting, supportive synchronicity. We've watched Jen grow and flourish in the music industry while also facing some serious challenges, like when she had to undergo brain surgery after di being diagnosed with an extremely rare disease called Moya Moya in late 2015. But then, but since then, we watched her somehow warrior through it all, recover incredibly while simultaneously balancing her friendships, work, touring, personal life, and snuggles with her cat, Misha, all while continuing to be a positive influence in everyone's lives. Jen is a thoughtful friend who is always down for an epic time, gives amazing advice, loves to eat, and keeps it 100% real 100% of the time. Let's jump right in as we chat, tap into Jen's personal yet insanely successful and creative life during these these disruptive times. Welcome, Jen, to the podcast, guys. Woohoo! Hey! Yeah. Welcome, love. We're so, so happy cool. to have you on. We've been wanting to have you on for a while. I'm so glad that our timelines finally aligned and we're making it happen. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was always like, I mean, they're going to ask me, right? <laughs> Just waiting. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm super, super proud of the both of you for starting this podcast and really sticking with it. Like sticking with something like this that's scheduled is really hard. I mean, yeah. that's something I've learned during quarantine, starting right? my own program. It's yeah. like I'm, every week I'm like, fuck, I have to do this again. Right? And then I, but I do it and it's always really good. Cause you know, you get exactly. to, that's my weekly, weekly social hour. Cause you can't yes. even really see that many people right now. So yeah, so that's been, that's been really nice, but it's, it is a thing where you're not used to, well, I mean, yeah. Maybe you guys are better at maintaining maintaining a schedule, but I'm like, oh, I have to do something every week. That's so weird. I'm used to like a really chaotic schedule. So yeah. um, having this regimented thing has always been really crazy. Yeah, like having consistency and like planning it and like following up with people. Yeah, it's a lot. So it, it if is. They're trying to do like a podcast or a YouTube channel. Um, uh, you know, you have to stay consistent and also just kind of be just deliver what you what you got. You know. For sure. Yeah. I, I know that feeling that I'm like, dang, Laura, there's so much work, but once, <laughs> but after we record, it's like it, these, these, these conversations, they literally fuel our souls because we talk to so many interesting people. It's so many dynamic backgrounds that it's, we feel rejuvenated after these conversations. Yeah. I, I, i totally get that feeling. Yeah. It's like soul, soul fulfilling. Yes. Um, and Jen, so you were doing the lost resort on, on YouTube. How did, how is that going? Yeah, so I think now we're exclusively on Twitch. So we on have Twitch. a Twitch deal, which is good. Um, it's funny because like um, I don't do, I don't usually reach out unless the guests are people that I know, like friends. But um, we have Alistair, who is one of the producers on our program. He also works for uh, crap. He works for a PR company that I can't remember right now. Uh, Infamous. Mm -hmm. He works for Infamous. So he reaches out to people. And the tagline, because you know, if you're reaching out to people, their management, whoever, you're always like, our, our tagline is like the most popular music show on Twitch at 3 p.m. <laughs> it's like a really specific nice. thing because it's like maybe there's only one show on Twitch that does music at 3 p.m. Who, who even knows? But right, right. Um, but it's been really it's been um, really good and it's exercise. You know, these type of things exercise a different muscle. You know, you know how to talk colloquially with your friends, just like homies and that. But there's a different angle when there's um, like a little bit of an agenda you have questions you have things you want to go over there's a script mm -hmm. so it's a, this crazy balance between um being sociable and kind of winging it as well as trying to address the things that you guys have planned and i know that you guys do some really heavy planning so yeah yes. more than i can do <laughs> yeah oh that's cool so yeah you yeah. guys check it out um it's called um lost resort on on youtube and now on twitch so that's great so you guys yeah. check it out I think it's, it's I think it's actually only on Twitch now. I'm not sure exclusive. if we're doing it anywhere else. Yeah. Exclusive to Twitch. And did you just record the last episode? 
No, my shows are on Thursdays. So Thursdays, 3 p.m. Thursday, okay. Pacific Standard Time on Twitch and the the channels, the Lost Resort TV. Yes. Um, and yeah, it's been Would cool. Guys, we like- You guys are going to keep going with it though, like throughout the weeks. Apparently I've been doing it for like 30 some odd weeks now. Dang, so yeah, I it started- we started it very early into uh, stay at home COVID times, like the third week of March, maybe we started mm-hmm. then and that was kind of the top of it. And we've been doing it every single week since then. Yeah. And it's, it's so crazy that I forget. I was like, when did we already have that guest on? And I was like, I'd have to like go and look back and be like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, we've already had like, you know, like a Luna or someone like that. I'm like, oh mm-hmm. yeah, we already had them on. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I that's think it's cool. cool. Yeah, I think it's cool too. Cause you found a way to support local businesses with that as well, right? Exactly, because you yeah. always order from, from neighboring restaurants. And so I think that that was an amazing thing to do, especially in the beginning of the pandemic when no one really wanted to order out and just, you know, the restaurant industry was really struggling. Yeah, exactly. It was definitely something that I wanted to do on behalf of all the friends and people, you know, great people that we know, all these great businesses, um, knowing that, you know, there's already a really small profit margin when you do restaurants, right? You don't make, you you put in like $100, you might make $20, you know, there's other things that have a higher return on investment, like ROI than, than right. restaurants. So for them, just every dollar counts. So, I mean, there's some restaurants that are not even open anymore that we were ordering from in the beginning. Um, oh, wow. So it's something that you can't control, but at least for me, it's something I wanted to do. Alternatively, there was something interesting that I discovered is a lot of people that are my guests, they don't want to order takeout. They've been cooking. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah, that's provided a different kind of angle. And so usually when I prep that section, I'm always like, you know, this is in support of our local businesses, but also yeah. in support of your health. So if you decide that you eat out too much, you were eating out too much pre-COVID, yeah. and people are choosing that time to kind of like work on their health. Not me, but then other people. Oh, I love that. That's that, Yeah, that's an interesting little take. Who knew that it was going to spin in that direction? Exactly. So it's, it's been good. And sometimes people are in another time zone. Like I interview people in Australia, a lot of people in the UK and they're like, it's midnight. <laughs> we can't order any food. So I'm always yeah. like, oh, okay, well I'll be like slowly eating my food on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're still finding your way to be global connecting around the world really. Yeah. It's been interesting. It's not something I ever wanted to do actually. I never thought it would be, um, kind of like a podcasty youtuber you know talk showy type person I was just I was so strict on the idea that I'm just I'm just a musician I this is what I do I make music um I perform and I tour and I only do things that are in support of those things you know and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um Lewis my manager who you guys both know he's the one who pushed me he actually kind of bamboozled me into doing it he's like do you want to like host this twitch show and I was like uh I don't know maybe I'll let you know and then the day before he's like you know it's tomorrow and I'm like what (laughs) at that point there's no way to uh, replace me with anyone else they already had uh our the first guest which was soul clap so I basically yes so I did it and I was like okay cool and then they're like well you know that next week there's another guest I'm like oh shit (laughs) I was like shit I have to do this and that was it is the tool is the tool for success you guys are both so consistent and have such a good work ethic. I'm just so lazy sometimes. I just want to sit on my sofa, pet my cat, and just watch TV. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, right now, especially, I mean, we're still going through the pandemic. I mean, I think it's still hard to even just to, you know, just get yourself to do things still. Because, it's. I mean, yeah, a lot of people are feeling a lot of, you know, a lot of burnout, a lot of, you know, reflection. So mm-hmm. kudos to you if you got a full-time nine-to-five job or starting a new job, a new hustle. So yeah, kudos. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> You're making it (laughs) (laughs) for real, dude. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Jen, so tell it like, so people that are our listeners, you know, we have different listeners from all around the globe, mostly in the U S UK, Australia. Um, it tell us, um, a little bit about your journey in music. Cause I mean, yeah, if you don't know about Toki, she's yeah. You guys got to know about Jen. Jen. She's amazing. So tell (laughs) us about your, your journey in music. Um, I mean, it's a pretty long winded story, I guess, to put it to kind of truncate it and make it a little bit more concise. I started making um, beats when I was like in my first year of college and I've just been going ever since. And then starting um, maybe like 2009 and 2010, it became my career. So for the last decade, over a decade now, I've been doing this professionally, self-supporting, 
it's been a very steady rise for me I would say like compared to some artists where we've seen like our friends Anderson Pack, where they kind of like they've been hustling but they had a moment where they like blew off for mm-hmm. me it's been really really steady but I think that is a way that I'm I'm quite proud of how I I kind of um our the architecture of my career is something I'm really proud of mm-hmm. and um yeah now that's me today and so I'm like you know doing things I went from like playing in little to, or in Chinatown at like mountain bar to now, you know, I play Coachella, like outside lands, like Burning Man. I don't know. Yeah. What are big festivals? Like yeah. EDC. Yeah. Or like, what is the one Ross Gilda? That's the one where I saw Laura there. Yeah. And oh then, yeah. Over there yeah. in that's, Europe somewhere. That's, Glastonbury. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Ross Gilda's in Denmark. Was that Denmark? Denmark. Yeah. That was in Denmark. Yeah. Yeah, you were yeah. on one. You were sick, right? Weren't you kind of sick that day? I think so. I was oh, just wait. like, oh, maybe you weren't sick. I don't remember, but it was. Oh my was god, fun. we're yeah. always on one. <laughs> Definitely, that was like the best, the best time for sure. I, I mean, um, Jen was taking over the Beats by Dre like um, Snapchat, and I was like, I like, ro- I like rushed myself on stage while she was playing Coachella, and I was like, the best moments ever. Oh yeah, you were like my social media manager that day. That was great. You <laughs> killed it. It's like all the zooms and all the texts and all so, the things, all yeah, the perfect. you know loops and yeah. things. It was pretty. Yeah. So it was pretty fun. Our yeah. little like trifecta of friends has been so fun. Just following Jen around the globe, like Japan, where Liz got engaged, mm-hmm. and now she's getting married oh, this week. Yeah. Woo-hoo, yeah. woo-hoo. That is, congratulations! Yeah, that, that is was one such of my a, favorite memories. That, that worked out cool coincidentally, right? That I happened to be there with Regina. It was just, it was it happened to work out, right? Uh, it, yeah. was, it was fucking fate, honestly, because that was that was like one of my favorite days ever. I did not sleep for two days. I just went. <laughs> I was like on one that day. I was really, really on one. That's oh so my cool. God. Yeah. So Liz got so engaged. Fun at like like a fake Eiffel Tower or something in Japan. Oh, it was, it was Tokyo things. Tower. Tokyo, yeah. Tokyo Tower. Tower. Yeah, Tokyo Tower. Like, oh, fake Eiffel Tower. Um, <laughs> Tower. And then Jen played a really cool show in the, in like in the middle of the city. Oh my God, night. we got so wasted. And we were like, so wasted. Uh, just people were like shotgunning. Well, like we, our group of friends was shotgunning beers. And it's something that <laughs> well, Japanese people are not familiar with. <laughs> They're yeah. not used to shotgunning beers. And then- yeah. But we're just like wasted. There's all this like beer sludge on the floor. And I was like, I was like, sorry. I know. But <laughs> I like, remember, they, they, were, they were super nice about it. They, they knew we we're having fun. They were yeah. like coming in like every second and cleaning it all up. And we we're like, oh my God. And then we would do it again. We we're like, oh no, it's okay. <laughs> just leave it. It's okay. Yeah, man. That's so cool. Yeah, that was so um, nice. Because you guys surprised me at Tokyo Tower, you and Regina. Because I knew we were going to see yeah. you later that night. But then you guys showed up and I was like, oh. It was so it was such a moment you know what was so funny is how much you had no idea that it was happening it was like why did oh, no, your I friend suddenly show up why is why are you and chris pacing around and no one's around you no chris idea was, it was so funny he was so nervous too we're like why isn't he asking him <laughs> I, have all the, I have all the video of everyone being like when is he gonna ask when is he gonna ask i know it That'd was so funny. funny and he was so nervous it's not like you would you like you guys are just meant for each other you guys are like a great oh, wonderful couple you. so it was funny because he I, I could I could he Chris has asthma so I could hear that his breathing was kind of off uh-huh. and I was like I was like are you okay do you need your puffer he's like I'm fine I'm like are you okay like it really sounds <laughs> like you need your puffer and it was really just because he was nervous but oh I love that I want to talk about one one little memory before we move on remember that time that Laura jumped off the stage at lightning in a bottle oh my God. Oh my god, I forgot that, that was, was a thing. So Dude, I was just thinking oh, about that the other day. crazy. I love that. Yeah. That festival is so lit. We all went to Burning or me, me and Liz went to Burning Man for the first time the same year. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that was awesome. the same thing. That was so that crazy. Was and, or like turned up yurt and like there's oh lots of wild so things. So many so epic pre-COVID we were, times. We were on it's that still plane, gonna continue. Right? Yes, yes. We were on like, you were DJing on that plane, right? That's when that, that was that year at Burning Man. It was like a plane. Is it a plane? It was like a cutoff, like huge. It was like a front part of an entire airplane. No, I don't think, I don't think I did that. Gaslamp might have done that one. I I think I did. Jen, you played, you played in front of a, an air, or that airline, that airline plane. I did Camp Question Mark, which was like the crazy triangle thing that's on Oh, that was okay. on the thing and that's on the esplanade in like one o'clock and then I played mm-hmm. ego trip and then the first year I might have only done like a like a couple no maybe one more like an art car but I don't think I did 
the I didn't do the airplane. I've never done the airplane. Oh, and now shit. there's like a bigger airplane now. Oh so yeah, now there's like a one. really mm-hmm. like a 747, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's I think it's yeah, called wow. a 747. Oh. Dang. <laughs> Who knows when? Who knows when we'll be able to go back out on the playa and have make yeah. more. You know, maybe next year, because, you know, insider information, all these festivals are planning to start again in May, but they may not, you know, there are tentative dates, but yeah, um, yeah, many festivals are starting and are, are starting to reach out for offers in May. So I'm glad that, you know, I I know next year I have some shows lined up if, you know, if everything goes according to plan, if people can maintain their social distancing, if we can have this curve go down you know, right. Maybe, right. maybe a vaccine will work out to help some people or there'll be mm-hmm. a better means of treatment perhaps you know but right right any any little sneak peeks into what your schedule might be like for next year well the uh the things that are confirmed that i can say because i was already going to do it is coachella so coachella was moved twice now so it was moved from this year april to october and then this yes. year october to next april from next right. april to next October next so October, so October October 2021 yeah how hello oh, what was it I was gonna call it like oh man I forgot I had like a good name I was gonna call it like Celloween maybe that's it <laughs> so <laughs> cute. Um, that'd be cool so, everyone dressed up yeah I mean I think it'd be pretty fun I mean it's a it's different than everyone dressing in like flower girl yes. you know so yes. it'll be a different vibe um and yeah some other ones but I guess I just don't want to confirm because we don't know how the dates are gonna go so right right okay yeah, everything's all up ones. in the air yeah, yeah I'm just I'm maintaining positivity we're gonna get out of all of this and we'll end up in a better place hopefully you know yeah gotta think positive manifest good things yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. that that's the thing is like people really you know people really miss that festival life and like dance culture and so I think that when it does come back into reality I think it'll be better organized you know be more thought thoughtful so mm-hmm. yeah it's hopefully you know everything gets better mm-hmm. um so speaking of the pandemic Jen um what have you discovered about yourself or gained during the pandemic doing a lot of introspective work or anything like that what, what, what's what's been up with you you know I've come into the understanding that my approach to this pandemic and stay at home is not the same as everyone else's in that I feel I was putting I was starting to make myself feel bad because I'm not as um driven fruitful a lot of people are like oh you know I'm gonna exercise more or I'm gonna eat healthier or lots of people I know are working on tons of music because they're not touring I've really not I haven't been very fruitful and I think during times where I am more busy I make way more music okay Mm -hmm. so you know there's lots of memes and these like woke quotes but you know everyone is handling this pandemic in a way that suits them the best. And for me, it's just my way of attacking it and not putting too much pressure. And I have faith in myself that, you know, I will get out of this sort of like, I don't know if you would call it like a writer's block, but Hmm. I just don't feel like the inspiration to work on a lot of music, but I have made significant like tracks that I'm really proud of. I'm just not as like, some people are like, I'm making five beats a day. I'm not doing that you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, this is also my first, I've never rested this much in the last 10 years. I've just been going and going. So I'm just enjoying this, you know, like I have a new boyfriend and we're just like enjoying and traveling. We just came back from Big Sur. So this is a big time where I'm just investing in to my happiness and well-being. And that mm-hmm. might not be through create creating more artwork, but I think through this, I'll be able to create much better artwork. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, actually, I've been working on playing guitar a bunch. So I guess I have oh, done something kind of useful. So yeah, that's something I'm like, working on. Like seeing your other other the brain power and the brain waves for sure. And that's mm-hmm. and that's cool. I mean, I think everyone deserves this kind of global rest. You know, we, I think that all of our ancestral powers have been manifesting these like this global rest. I feel like, yeah. you know, kind of just yeah, living think- in the moment and not planning so far ahead. Mm-hmm. I think you just pressured everybody to do something different and I think that that's like one of the most unique things of this year it's like oh whatever you thought you had planned like no you're going to do something totally different and whatever it's going to be is actually going to work out in the end <laughs> yeah it's going to work it's out like, in your favor it's like oh yeah, yeah. Moving, moving back in with your parents like some people are living with their parents now and they're yeah. like, they would never thought that they would do this but in a way it's bringing them like a new closeness or some or some other sort of big lesson so people yeah. are learning things in different ways 
Totally. Yeah, my sister, my sister's saying that their whole family's getting along better, which is funny because everyone's living at home. Not like they were, they were never dysfunctional to begin mm-hmm. with, but there's something about the fact that my nephews, because one's in middle school, one's in high school, there's no like oh. as much school pressure. Like you need to wake up in the morning, get to school, you're waking up. Like, there's none of that because he wakes yeah. up at 11 o'clock and it doesn't matter. Yeah. They're doing the homeschooling that like everyone's like, well, there's no pressure on you to have to do anything. Just like you just have to get good grades. You don't have to, yes. you know, like there's no additional like every single day something has to happen pressure so everyone's all happy <laughs> it's really funny and i'm going to visit them this this week Yay. Yeah. yeah yeah does do, does your your high school nephew does he listen to your music is he like my aunt toki no he's kind of more of like like just plays video games he's just always on his okay. alienware playing i don't know what what game he's into now but he's usually just playing something okay he's like one of those guys i don't even know if he like cares about music he's in 10th grade too so maybe he'll just develop a taste for music later yes he's just more into video games and the other ones into like being outside and fishing and hiking and um things like that so he's struggling the most because he likes being outside the other one likes being Mm -hmm. inside and just like having a headset on and playing video games Mm -hmm. yeah video games rule the world right now man everyone's Switch, PlayStation, the new PlayStation, PlayStation's coming out. Everyone's talking about that. Oh my god! Oh my god! Gaming, if you want gaming life, the most, <laughs> the most lucrative industry in entertainment is video games. It makes I know. that industry makes more money than movies, music, film, television so combined. Crazy, so crazy. Have you ever sold like any of your songs or beats to video games? Yeah, I did a song uh, that was in uh, Ghost of Tsushima, which is like a really big Sony game that came out in May, maybe. Oh, so wow. I have a song uh, that I did. They they had like a few different artists, like Taiko, me. Oh, uh, I forgot who else. So, some other people that mm-hmm. basically did remixes of the score, and then they also used those remixes in some special modes in the game. But I haven't played oh, it, nice. but everyone says it's really amazing. <laughs> if they sent it to me, then I probably would try to find a way to play it. I could probably <laughs> yeah. ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, you probably, yeah, you're probably good. That's so cool. cool. All right. Um, so Jen, like, um, you are a successful business owner. Um, you know, and you keep your your income streaming moving and you're paying your invoices, hiring creators and stuff like that. If you don't know, Jen has a record label. Um, so what's your secret sauce for success for young women in the business industry, like for music? You know, it's really interesting, right? Cause technically I have, I have two businesses. The one business would be me. So I am my own product. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's weird to kind of objectify yourself in that way, you know, but as an entertainer, you are your product and it, you have to understand that too. So it doesn't mean you have to sell out or anything, but you have to understand that if you're living off your art, then your art and you, that's, that's a commodity. And so you have to have this fine balance between being an artist and understanding that you're still trying to sell music. And it's, it fucks with most creative people. Like you don't want to commodify, you don't want to, um, look at your music as something that needs to be sold but then you also want to survive on this for the rest of your life so you have to give and take Mm -hmm. and still make really good decisions so um that's one business right is me and then the other business is young art as a label which is in support of other artists young art does not make me very much money it's it's split between me and lewis but you know whatever that company makes stays in reinvesting in into the company so i don't that's cool i'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. like most businesses, like um, when, you know, when I was doing dime piece, like people don't realize, like, even when you make like a good amount of money, like say, you know, five grand to 10 grand on make maybe a record deal or like a, a gig or something, you don't even get to touch that. You kind of have to just re mm-hmm. you have to reinvest that money back into the business for it to actually yeah. grow. <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> you have know. to spend money to make money. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You have to invest. And there's that term I used before ROI return on investment. So if you invest um, you have to think down the line. So let's say um, I want to put out vinyl records for my album, Oasis Nocturnal. Vinyl records don't make you very much money, if at all. It's almost kind of promotional, right? So I make these vinyl records. They take three months to press. They're really complicated. The process mm-hmm. is really drawn out. But once you put it out, it's something very limited and very special. You don't make that much. Mm-hmm. But your audience then has this opportunity to be like, oh, she's the one she made vinyl. So she's they're going to go and buy that vinyl. They're going to hold on to that piece of physical merch 
And that will mean that I had invested this much money into this product that I made no, no profit on, but I have just retained one of my listeners. It's like, like customer retention or something like that. I forgot there's a term for it, but like long-term customers. Yeah. Yeah. They're now invested. So even though I may have lost money or not made money on that, they're more invested. And so the next time I come out with other versus other uh, merch items, they will go and they'll buy those and those will have a higher margin. Mm -hmm. And, and this is a way that you think via business, but not in a way that you feel like you're selling out, you know, you're Mm -hmm. like, I'm making the vinyl for them, you know, but at the same time, I know that because they buy this, they'll be more incentivized to buy things in the future, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Or you do that and it pulls them to the store and they buy other things that have a higher margin. Right. Um, Okay. But yeah, like business is such a crazy thing. There's so much to it. What is your, I mean, Jen's been doing music for 10 plus, 10 plus years. So like, I think for any successful business or small business or any type of female owned business or whatever, you need to have a success team. So what's your, what's your success team, Jen? Like who, who do you have around you for you to have a successful flow of, of, of business? I mean, for, for me, my team changes all the time and it's, it can be complicated, but you know, I've been doing this, I've been making music for like, ooh, I don't even want to say how long, but I've been making music for a very long time. And then professionally for the last decade. And since day one, I've been working with Lewis. So Lewis Kunstler, who's my manager, he's my friend, he's like my brother, you know, he now lives in Berlin. So he's closer to you at this point, Laura, but Mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's someone that um, pushes me when I don't want to do things like the show, for example, I didn't want to do the show, but at the same time, he's very much there to listen to me when I'm like, I don't want to do this particular thing. So, um, and he's really good in supporting my ideas. And that's the kind of person I am, you know, um, some artists needs need to heavily rely on someone else because they just want to make music. But for me, I like participating in the business. So he's good at supporting the things that I want to do. So yeah, he's there. But like things like um, lawyers. Yeah, you have a good lawyer, guys. Yeah, (laughs) it's important. So I, but I've replaced my lawyer. So this is like the third or fourth one I'm on right now. And um, she seems really cool. So oh, that's um, good. Yeah. And then I have a new uh, business management team. So I left the last one to this new one, in which they're fantastic. Um, You know, it's amazing. I have a new uh, booking agent or I move booking agencies this year. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that sometimes you need to change because at least in terms of your business, you can't get too sentimental. Sometimes Mm. things are just meant for that time. And at some point, maybe if someone's not doing the work that you want, you have to be okay letting them go. And I know as a business owner, you get really sensitive. You're like, Mm. well, I really like them and, or I've been working with them for so long, but if they're not serving your business, you need to make the hard decisions to go and find someone else that will help you grow. So you yeah. take it as like, it's not, it's not personal. It's, it really is business. And you kind of, you have to draw that line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. not easy all the time. And most right. of the deci- the good thing about me working with Lewis is I can make the decision, but I'm not too involved in the process of mm-hmm. saying goodbye. That's kind of something that he does on my behalf. Though sometimes he's, he's been the one to let go of tons of people on my team and not even me. Cause I don't, I only work with him and Lewis works with everyone else. Right. So right. Lewis will be like, Hey, you know, the social media person is not doing a good job, you mm-hmm. know? And then I'll be like, Oh yeah, it seems like they're not doing a good job. He's like, I'm going to, I'm probably going to let them go. And I'm like, if that's your decision, then you should do that. Yeah. So yeah so finding yeah. some, finding someone you really trust is super important. And I think because Lewis is really invested in my business, it's going to be the best. Anyone invested right. in your business is going to work the hardest Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. versus someone you're paying on a salary or someone you're paying uh, per hour. They're not going to be as invested. It's not their business, but right. you know, um, I think there's, that's know. a thing now, right? Where people can buy into like percentages of businesses or something. Mm-hmm. They, like, mm-hmm. I forgot what that's called, but that's like a new kind of cool model that some newer businesses are doing where it's like you own part of the business. I mean, yes. not like a big part of it, but you own part of it. So you feel yes. more invested in its success. Yeah. I yeah. think sometimes when, when you're, when you're starting with a, uh, with a company that's like, you know, beginning to, it's easy to hop onto that and then just kind of keep seeking those opportunities where you can actually be a part of the team in that sense, like be invested in it versus just being hired by them to do work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
That's cool. So yeah, that's a secret sauce, guys. Definitely have a success team. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, uh, management, a good lawyer, accountants, all that stuff. You know, you need to have that for sure in the industry. Um, Big Back Ninety Nine asks online. He said, "Where do you take consideration before signing an artist to your label?" What do I take into consideration? Um, <laughs> mostly that the music is good. <laughs> that's the most important thing. If people can. I haven't done open submissions in a very long time. Maybe, maybe I, I'll do, I'll, I'll consider doing that maybe towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, your music has to be good, you know, and by good, it's when I'm hearing it, it's, you know, it's written well, mm -hmm. it, it um, aligns with the label. The label has a very kind of specific sound aesthetic, you know, and it's mixed well. I mean, the basis, the basic thing that you can do for your music to make it sound great to anyone listening to it is to mix it well. You know, you can have a bat like an okay song mixed well, it'll sound way better than a great song that's mixed poorly, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's um, just a technical thing. So it's not even creative based. If you can teach yourself how to mix, mix down your songs better, it'll just read more, more professionally. Okay. And people look or, for that. Or if not make that investment and just hire somebody to really mix it yeah. super well. A hundred percent. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to be the one to do it, but, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess if you're like, if you're trying to seek out getting signed by a label like mine, I don't know, maybe you might be a little bit, I don't know how established you will be, but it is a worthy investment to learn right. the skills to, to mix or to farm it out and have someone that's a trained engineer do that for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Perfect. So I'd, I'd love to know about like the big lessons that you've learned in like the music industry throughout all this time. Like what are those big key lessons that you're like, this is what I've learned? Mm, I have a few. I guess the, the main one I always like to push is um, individuality. It's so important. And in this industry, there could be, let's say specifically in electronic music, let's say um, music, electronic music has been existing. There's some basic like house and techno. And then you have someone that goes and is a disruptor and will use someone very mainstream. I'll say Skrillex. Before him, no one exactly sounded like him. And I'm sure when he was sharing his music, not everyone was like, wow, this is a hit. They're probably like, this is weird. We've never heard it before. You want to be the weirdo. Even if people don't understand your music in the beginning, that is what's going to set you apart. And I was never easy to categorize, even to this day, like no one really knew what, to, where to put me. And that gives me an edge compared to people that just sound like everyone else. Cause if you're going to sound like, so if someone like a Skrillex or a Flume or a Flying Lotus, you know, if they come out and you're like, well, uh, I want to sound like them and all your music sounds like them. How will people know if it's your music or their music? They're probably just going to assume you're a copycat or it's that person's music. Mm -hmm. You have to have something special. And that's by, that's through accepting your uniqueness and your approach to music. But I will say a lot of people have built a fantastic career fitting into very specific molds. Like house has very specific rules. And so you can play by the rules of house and still be super successful. And mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to sound super different from other people, but you have an approach to that genre that no one else has so mm -hmm. the main thing is be yourself set yourself apart and um try to find the confidence in yourself to believe and to see it through you know it's it's hard and not everyone is going to like what you do but though for everyone who doesn't like it there might be one person that does and you just have to keep thinking mm -hmm. of it that way mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean your career i mean in any type of career you're always going to get a bunch of no's you're going to get a bunch of you know, bad ratings, bad reviews, people's personal opinions. But yeah, just if you believe in your project, just like keep persevering, right? Is that, I mean, that seems like what you did, Jen, just like keep, you kept persevering, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get, do you ever get in the way of yourself? Do you feel insecure sometimes to put something out? Does that ever occur? And how do you get past that? You know, maybe when I was like earlier on in my career, I was holding on to music too much. I was like, I don't know if this is ready to come out. I learned now that you should just put your music out. Like, don't hold on to it. Don't wait for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, people get so obsessed with this idea of an outcome. And when they're obsessed with the outcome, they're obsessed with the process, right? They're just like, well, if I want to make a song, I have to make sure that I do it right. And it comes out on the right label and it has to do this. 
if you hold on to it like that, your project will never come out. Nothing will happen. Just just put it out. Let people hear it because you're going to be looking for labels for the next 10 years. No one, mm-hmm. no one may sign it. But if you had put it out yourself, then at least you would have had someone listen to it. Mm-hmm. That's true. And, and that goes with any any kind of aspiration that people have. People are just so get so caught up in the process. They never actually do the thing that they set out to do. Mm-hmm. And um, I've had this conversation with other people. They're just like, well, you know, I want to start a YouTube career for example. And they're like, yeah, but I need to make sure that I have my set right. I get the right lighting and the right camera. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? There are people with like a hundred thousand, a hundred million views and they're just using their laptop screen. It doesn't, those things don't matter. Just, just start, you know, just start. And then you can start to add those things as you go. Um, Never, nothing will come into fruition if you're just thinking too much about like, oh, I have to do it the right way. It's okay. You just, so true. The concept of good enough, right? Is yeah. It'll never be perfect, but it'll be good enough. And yeah. um, that's something yes. important to learn as a musician too. Yeah. And, it, and uh, for everyone, it's like, use what you got, make it work with what you have. Because mm-hmm. if you, yeah, like you said, you wait for that perfect moment, that might never come. And then it's like, you missed your opportunity. Yeah. hundred percent. And, you know, it's, it's, um, realizing ideas right because you guys for example you girls you have decided to do this podcast you 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 fucking did it you just did mm-hmm. the thing you know you didn't just mm-hmm. talk about it and mm-hmm. people just talk too much and there's no action so mm-hmm. i think yeah. it's the 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 major key to success is going for it i think yeah you know? yeah going for it being consistent and just yeah, and, and putting it out there because sooner or later, some kid, some person, some 60-year-old will find your channel, will find your music, will find your project and really vibe with it, really relate to it, and you'll affect at least that person, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just slowly affecting just because you don't have the like button or the comment doesn't mean you're not affecting people, you know? 100%. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you put out a song on SoundCloud and you get 10 listens... That, I mean, aside from the one that's probably from you, you still have nine people <laughs> listen to your song, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's pretty incredible. And um, I don't know, people just get so discouraged because they're like, well, I want to just jump fast forward into just being yes. really famous. You know, yeah. it doesn't work like that. I mean, for the most part, at least in entertainment, if you're aspiring for fame, you're not going to get it, you know? Mm-hmm. You, you have to do yeah. it for the art. Uh, yeah, I see like a kind of, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's like a new thing, but it seems like a lot of artists are also becoming like that those very hardcore social creators like um sweetie she's like a very hardcore like tiktoker and like mm-hmm. you know doing the short like video clips and also doing music so how do you and you see that um and jason derulo you know he's like hardcore tiktoker hardcore how, how do you see that going because i feel like that seems like a, so, so much work within itself and doing music it's like wow yeah <laughs> i can't ah oh, tiktok <laughs> man that shit is so <laughs> You know, I've never felt so disconnected from like a certain generation, but I mean, I don't feel disconnected. I just like the TikTok thing. You know what it is? I'm too shy for TikTok, Mm. if that makes sense. Like TikTok is for the one who's like, I have no shame. I'm down to do this like TikTok dance to this like song that's big on TikTok. And I'm just so like, I don't know. It's weird because like TikTok is also this place where music becomes really viral. And as a musician, am I going to play the viral song and do the TikTok dance, but I have my own music. So it's, it's purely a social celebrity kind of platform. You know, it doesn't uh, push my music in any way, really, unless you get a viral song on TikTok, which I've seen has happened to lots of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people are only making music just as short as TikTok clips now. It's crazy. Damn. Yeah, Damn, these yeah. like social platforms, like they fucking revolutionize industries. It's an it's an interesting one. Um, but we'll see, you know, mm-hmm. what, what happens with TikTok. It has a very narrow uh, age range. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how Snapchat, is anyone on Snapchat? Is that a yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, I feel like, I mean, I think maybe some people still use it, but I doubt people use that anymore. Because you can do it on Instagram, right? Anything right. that was on Snapchat, you can now do on right. Instagram. But there's some, big, <laughs> yeah. there's some big dollars being spent in in ads and investing into TikTok and just yeah. because, because of the buying power of that generation, everybody wants to reach that generation. Like that, that I don't, I'm not sure what gen that is, but everyone, all these companies want to reach them. So everyone is freaking spending so much money into, into TikTok. But yeah, we'll see how long it lasts because also with that generation, they have a really short t- like attention span. So yeah. how, how long will you be able to keep them engaged there? 
exactly mm-hmm. it's it's interesting i find that tiktok is also sped up people's atten- attention span but mm. could be a part of this toxic um atmosphere that's happening in social media for the very very young so post millennial would be gen z right Mm-hmm. So we're millennials after that is Gen Z and Gen Z can go as young as, I don't know, like 14 or 12, something, something like that. And you see these young women and young men that are like 15 years old and they're ripped. They got like abs, they got all the makeup, they're all contoured, the hair is long. Yeah. And I don't remember looking like that at that age, you know, like I was just like, I was still like probably watching cartoons at 15. You know, if I look at my, my nephews, like one is, I think one's 15 now. He's, he's kind of maturing at the rate that I remember it being like at that time. But mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot of pressure on young women to just develop that kind of aesthetic and hopefully yeah. there'll be some other revolution where people will be more into just natural or not that or something. I know there there does feel like a pool of people going in that direction right like I'm not going to shave my underarms like I'm not going to wear makeup I'm not going to wear a bra there feels like some some of the people are going in that direction but because Hollywood is just such a big part of everyone's life now everyone wants to look like Kim Kardashian and everyone wants to look like all these celebrities yeah it's so it is it is it's going to be difficult for that generation for sure to see how how they manage it yeah it's really interesting like you know you know living in los angeles like that was the constant like new media news updates like what are the kardashians doing then i moved here and everyone's like did not give a fuck but i do ask some girls like friends of mine i'm like oh what do you guys think of like the Ky- like kylie and kim and they're like we think like she's like i think they're the most beautiful women like on the planet and so it's just it's very interesting like to hear their perspective and then also mm-hmm. us living in la kind of seeing through that kind of facade and like the curtain you know <laughs> yes yes yeah. They're canceling that program. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they canceled it. Yeah, this is the last season of it, I think, is right now, which is, we'll see. I mean, they're just, it's just going to be replaced with more programs that are similar. There are already programs that are probably similar. Or their own solo spinoffs. Yeah, I think the whole empire, they're they're stopping all the reality shows for all of them. That's my understanding, I think. Dang. So t- touching on Hollywood, you know, you do have a, a leg in there. You're around a, a lot of interesting Hollywood people. Can you tell us like a, a, I don't know, some kind of weird insight into Hollywood that you might have? Mm. Um, or a story or just something that was like, you know, just super out Jen there. Jen got plenty of stories. You just gotta have gra- to look into the bag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so, there's so many stories, you know? Um, like the ones that you can say, the ones you can't say. Exactly. I, I mean, um, I mean, I, you guys have both been along with me for a few. There's I one. Know. There's that one time you were at Anderson's uh, <laughs> house, Liz, and then Hannibal Buress was hitting on her, which was I thought was really funny. She's like, hitting on Liz. Yeah, Hannibal oh Buress, God, but she's like, I don't even know who he is. That is so, so weird because I yeah. matched up with him when I was online dating on um, what was that site? What's the what's the dating Raya? app? Raya. On Raya. And actually, I was having a really good conversation with them, and then it got really dark, and then I unmatched ourselves. He was actually, <laughs> he was really, really nice. Like, I was surprised, because, you know, sometimes comedians can be mean or just weird, but he was super nice. I, I was yeah. I was really having a wonderful conversation with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know... Uh, you, I mean, I have no no more to offer than probably Laura. Laura's been around all sorts of crazy shit too. To I be know. honest, I, Laura. I think if you, like, I think if you I'm live like, in LA, you don't even have to be in an industry to be in to be around that. You it's know? so yeah. true. You can it's work at a coffee a, like a shop and be around house. a bunch of famous people. You know, that's yeah. the crazy part. Like when I moved to LA, I realized you know, everyone always dreams about moving to LA. I didn't dream about moving to LA. I ended up here. But when I got here, I realized how close you could be to Hollywood with just, I mean, literally just being here. It's like, Hollywood is just so many, it's so, it's so close to enter like that world. And then you realize everyone is just normal and they're just normal people with, you know, weird personalities or, you know, dynamic backgrounds, like whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I do I do miss I mean I miss I miss that kind of world like little world when you start your day and end up somewhere on the other side of Santa Monica at someone's house and underground in someone's (laughs) studio or something having crazy psychedelics or something like I miss that kind of weird 
whimsicalness but oh yeah you know. <laughs> me and laura and me and laura ended up at joshua tree we ended oh my up in God. joshua tree at eric andre's birthday and he had a who was there like tom green it was so funny was tom, so green was there. tom green yeah, was there tom green and... was asking us for a cigarette or something like that yeah and janae janae Aiko was dating um childish Tom Gambino. Yeah, Not, yeah Childish Gambino. We, that was so weird. I was smoking so much weed in that like one trailer oh my thing. God. And then Jen um, made me drive two hours back to LA where we were buzzed. <laughs> don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have crazy stories. But I mean, you'll understand if you ever move to LA. But it seems like there's a mass exodus of out of those major cities though. New York, know. LA, everyone's moving out. What the hell? Yeah, actually, um, even crazy. even the guy I'm dating right now, he's just like really considering I mean we've been both like kind of reading about it but lots of people are leaving California because yeah mostly because California is so expensive you and know the tax, the tax yeah is crazy. that's the, that's the main thing that we yeah. this is one of the most highly taxed states across the board the sales tax is super high LA especially so if you want to yeah. say California is expensive LA is ex- extremely expensive you know sales tax here is almost 10 percent. but if you go to like Orange County it's still at like eight or something like that it's crazy you know? yeah I see people buying up places in Henderson and Vegas and moving to Texas and our friend works in like the real estate and he's like there's just hundreds and thousands of people moving out of LA going back to their hometown yeah it's crazy New York's the same you know so yeah people people love there to come here because this is cheaper than there but I know yeah we'll see. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Would you consider yeah. moving? You think? Would you? Would Me? you be down? Yeah. Um. You know, it's hard to say because for my for my industry, it is really important to kind of have a community in the city. But mm-hmm. um, maybe not. It's not like I see them all the time, um, like other musicians. And it's so easy to work with people remotely now. Yeah. If right. you want to do something right. collaborative. For me, it's just touring. So if I move to another city, I mean, mm-hmm. I consider just moving to another country, you know, like, why don't I just right. live in Costa Rica half the year? Um, but I just want to make sure it's easy for me to fly around because it's really fatiguing flying a lot. And I still know that's never yeah. going to change. I'm still going to be flying out every weekend to, to DJ or to go on tour or whatever. So I've thought about it, but there's just something about the city, like my support system is here. I mean, yeah. until, unless they start moving, but like all my friends are here yeah Uh, my like like my home like high school friends are still here yes and you know if I move somewhere else I'm gonna be alone you know I mean Mm -hmm. maybe not I may be able to just like have friends I make in a new place but Mm -hmm. you know at some point you want to keep making new friends and am I at the point I want to adventure that much so I'm debating yeah maybe just move to Vegas I mean you move to Vegas you're close Huh? Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I say it, do it. I mean, everyone follow their bliss and then, you know, LA will always be there, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, you're, you're an example of someone who's left <laughs> LA to um, follow love, you know, and it's yeah, really, mm-hmm. it's a really big statement because, you know, living there is so different than living here and oh yeah. It's so hard, you know. but you know what? I do miss you guys. I miss my friends and mm-hmm. I miss like my community of like people that are into wellness and like, like working out and, and you're just like your, your nail techs and you're like your hairstylist and stuff. But through time, you know, I realized like just being in COVID and the pandemic that where you are is where you need to be right now. So just yeah. stay put and everything's good and it's all good. But the community I met here of like some industry people and nice people are actually really, really like loving and like really super sweet and supportive. And I'm just like super thankful I got to meet these people at my age, you know, so, you know, I'm just trying Yay. to take care of and you know, help the network out here and just also just, just be trying to get no COVID actually. I'm not trying to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Yay. yeah, you, you'll amazing. survive anywhere you go, you know, yeah. Laura's yeah, a social, awesome. social butterfly. She um, is. But I miss you but, guys. But and literally uh, for the last like two years, she's been saying, I have no friends. I have no friends. So I'm so happy. It warms my heart so much to finally hear her say that she's like, <laughs> finally has like loving, supportive people around her. Cause it's taken her a long time to embrace that and just yeah, find the right people. Months. Oh my God, yeah, 17 it's taking you a long a time. It takes a while, dude. I hated LA for a long time. I couldn't, I didn't know anyone. I moved here from scratch and not knowing anyone. And I was, once I had everybody and once I had you guys, I was like, oh shit, like this is it. This is the place for me for sure. Yeah. We've had yeah. some best, best adventures of all fucking time, but. So many um, more to come. So many more to come. Yeah. Since Jen, you're on the Conscious Kitchen, a lot of our conversations happen around the kitchen. And I see that you're cooking up a few things in your kitchen. So what are you cooking right now? What are you, what are you whipping up? 
Um, let's see. <laughs> I went through like a really heavy cooking phase towards uh -huh. the beginning of yeah. this year. Um, I think everyone was right. Yeah. Actually, what's funny is right now I'm on a juice cleanse. So. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Nice. So, um, that's where I am at the moment. Cause I, you know, I like took a trip with my dude and we went to Big Sur. And then once we ended Big Sur, we're like, well, we want to stay out. So then we went to San Diego. So like been gone, I mean, not that long, like less, still less than a week, but mm -hmm. we were just like, you know, when you're, you're out and you're in love and you just like eat so bad, <laughs> I mean, you eat great, but eating great yes. is eating bad. You know yes. what I mean? So yes. Yes. Um, yes. it's, it's one of those things. So, I mean, that's why like both of us actually independently, he's not here right now, but we're both on this like three day juice cleanse just to kind of re <laughs> reset. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. You know, obviously I did, I've been doing the sourdough thing like many other people. So yes, actually I actually mean, brought, so I brought cool. one for, for Liz. So Liz got to experience yeah, a little bit of the, I know your loaves look crazy good. So good. Um, and yeah, so I made one last night too. I'm trying a, a different recipe that's a little bit more sped up because standard um, sourdough recipe takes like two days, fully going back like every couple hours, sometimes every 30 minutes to like fold and, and stretch and do all these things. But you I, it's kind of like a plant so you get really attached to it or like kombucha. <laughs> you know when you're like when you have kombucha you're like oh I need to take care of my kombucha mm -hmm. nice. um very very similar in that way so I'm trying to figure out like what things I can do with the discard because when you make when you have a sourdough starter you always have to um when you feed it you actually have to throw away half of what's in there and then you feed it so what do you do with the other half so I have it in a container right. and I've been using it for like pancakes and crepes but I'm also trying not to eat too many carbs so it's like a <laughs> weird weird thing um, yeah oh, that's okay listen to your body carbs no carbs juice cleanse hardcore greasy french fries it's okay. yeah oh my god i love french fries <laughs> it's so all we eat here so in fucking spain is like they live off potatoes so it's like oh yeah potatoes, potatoes bravas <laughs> potatoes, bravas everything about potatoes um I want also, I anyways, speaking yeah. of your relationships, um, yes. I mean, you've had some really awesome, I mean, I've known you, Jen, you've had so many different romantic relationships during all your growth and success. Like, how do you, how do you, how have you dealt with like breakups and touring or like, how did you cope? Like, do you ever mix mm. business and personal separate or like even getting inspired to like write a music from a breakup or anything like that? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I do find that heartache is inspiring but it's not like I'm writing music out of the heartache like I'm sad and I'm making a music because when I'm really sad I can't make music I'm you know like anyone that deals with extreme I wouldn't call it depression because I don't think that I qualify as that but when you know when you're breaking up with someone there's a whole like two weeks to a month where you just can't do anything mm -hmm. um, yes. but I would say that the reason why I do get very fruitful after a breakup is because I'm in a mind state where I want to think about something else. And that makes me create a lot. So I end up making tons of music when I break up with people just because <laughs> I want to put, I just want to focus that energy on something else. So like, yeah. mm -hmm. there's like a, the first like two weeks, maybe a month, depending on how long the relationship where I'm like really mopey. And that's all the time I give myself after that. I'm like, I can't do this. So then after that usually is where you like start working out, you get really fit and then revenge body. Yeah. <laughs> And get like start making music start going out and all that stuff and then you end up in another relationship and then you gain most of the back weight back so all the <laughs> all the weight that I lost and like all the like great workout like the or like what I did to to work out more and all that stuff kind of disappeared once I entered another relationship mm -hmm, but we're mm -hmm. both trying to be like let's just like let's go walk more and then we'll just I don't know not do that yeah <laughs> shout out to shout out to all of us having healthy relationships right now Okay. And Liz is getting married on Sunday. Let's go. Yay. I'm excited. <laughs> I can't wait for you guys to see the special day for sure. I'm curious though, how, because Jen is always so happy on stage and she's always she has, like this beautiful smiley face. And I think that that's one of the things that people love to see about her. Mm -hmm. But when you're, but when you're going through something personal, how, how do you, how do you bring that amazing energy? Like, how do you push through like those personal moments? You know, it's hard. It depends on how, how fresh those moments are. And sometimes it can be a little difficult, you know, and in some ways, um, you know, you're a, when you're on stage, you're a performer, you're a musician, but you're a performer. So there's a part of me that has to do a little bit of acting if I'm that sad, because I don't want to share that sadness with my crowd, you know, mm -hmm. 
And there's a lot of, not like fake it till you make it, but if I, if I put a smile on my face, even when I'm hurting and if the crowd is smiling, then them being happy, then makes me happy. Then I'm actually legitimately smiling. And for that moment, even though I entered maybe a bit sad or depressed or in a mood, being with them and seeing their joy, like, how could you be upset when everyone's so happy? Then I'm like, oh shit, well, I'm happy. And then maybe after, then I get on that like performing high, maybe mm -hmm. coming off stage, I might be like, well, I'm a little sad again, you know, mm -hmm. or I might ride that high until I get to my hotel room. But, you know, for the most part at this age, I have just dealt with so much, like we've all just broken up with people. We know what it's like. You know that yeah. even though you break up with someone, it literally is not the end of the world. Because if yeah. you've gone through it in the past, you know that even though it sucks, you will get over it because you've done it so many times like you so know true. yes yeah and yeah. I think when you're younger you don't realize that you think it's the end of the world it's like your first long-term relationship and it just ended and you're like oh shit what am I gonna do like our lives are so intertwined but then if you get through that you're like oh well it's just peanuts afterwards you know you allow yourself to feel the pain but you at least understand that you that you will get over it because you have done that so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Jen is a freaking beast I mean you know, from playing a show and then like going out after possibly dealing with the breakup and then going back on taking a flight and then redoing it all over again. It's like, I feel like you music musicians are like Olympic athletes and shit, you know, when it comes to all that stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get, but the other thing for me is too, like, I don't date around. I'm usually in pretty long-term relationships. So prior mm -hmm. to the one I'm in now, it's like the last one was like four or five years. I can't remember. And then prior to that was three years and me, being a musician, has played a role in the last two major relationships because the first one I mean not the recent one the one before that you know the dude cheated on me because I was on tour and that was more of a convenience thing it was already a bad relationship you know but he mm -hmm. took the opportunity to cheat on me while I was on tour and I was like damn is that how is he wet. explained is that how he explained it is no 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 it had nothing to do with me leaving the okay. relationship itself was bad. He just used the opportunity to cheat on me while I was gone. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the reason why the relationship was bad. No, um, no. So I just meant like, is that, is that what he said? Like, oh, I cheated on you. Well, you weren't here. Oh, I found out. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> he didn't tell me. Didn't tell <laughs> They're never going to tell you that they, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess a, a decent guy would tell you, but he didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I found out when I came back that he had done that because of like some other like suspicious stuff. And then I was like, oh, yeah. dude, you're totally cheating on me. Or you had cheated on me. I don't know if it was like ongoing, but um, yeah, I mean, that was that was an issue. But I also think that I wasn't a good partner to too. Like I can own up to how I participated in that relationship. And I think I've grown to be a much better partner now. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad. So every moment like that, even if though he cheated on me, I wouldn't change a thing because that yes. had to happen for me to learn yep. the lessons that I'm equipped with now. And yes. even the next relationship, touring wasn't an issue. We were both musicians, but it was more just he had aspirations that didn't fit a long-term relationship. And I just had right. to accept that as well. And he's not a bad person or anything like that. And he's dating other people too, or maybe, no, he's, he has like a committed relationship that he's in now. So mm -hmm. things are just not meant to happen. Mm -hmm. And even now it's like, I appreciate this relationship. I go day by day and I've been through a lot of long-term relationships, even other than those other two. So mm -hmm. I just, you know, I don't go in very goal oriented. Like I'm going to marry this guy. Cause if that, if that doesn't happen, you're going to be disappointed. But I go and going, you know, like, I like this person. I enjoy our time together. Um, it seems like it can go somewhere more long term and I'll just write it out, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you start putting expectations like I need to have a baby now and I need to have, mm -hmm. get married now. If that doesn't happen, then you're going to be really disappointed. So I'm trying to right. be chill. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. expectations. Yeah. Expectations are, I don't know, life's, I don't know, one of just life's weird things for sure. I mean, it's yeah. hard. As gonna, well, if, women, if you create expectations, you're going to get disappointed, you know? Yeah. And I feel do. like, uh, am I the only one that feels guilty, like to fantasize? Like, I love to fantasize. I'm like, oh, this is what's, uh, this is what's going to happen. Or maybe this could happen. No, or, I don't you know. think nothing, there's nothing ever wrong about um, having intentions. Like intentions are, 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 are something that we should all have. Like my intention is, I look at it this way, instead of just being like, I'm on this road and I need to get to that destination. I'm more like, I, at least I know I'm in the right direction. I might not take that road. I might take a different road, but it's still there. So for me, yeah. um, I like the idea of marriage. I like the idea of long-term partnership, 
But for me, if I get too I caught up in the idea of marriage, maybe that's not what it'll be for me. Maybe I will have like a long-term partnership that isn't exactly marriage, but will be better than being married, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, you know, that is yeah. always a possibility. With this relationship though, I mean, um, it's been very straightforward and every we're very honest with each other, I think in this, this point in our life. So, I mean, the intentions for both of us are very long-term, but none of our saying is, none of, neither of us are saying that that's what the way it has to be, but we would like, and it's nice to ha be on the same page with someone. Hell yeah, definitely. Having, having communication, just putting it out there, being honest. Yeah. Mm hmm I know, right? So, I mean, I feel like in our generation too, like all so many relationships and partners are like marriage, hmm, like kids, especially with like all the stuff going on. It's like, oof, it's so interesting. No kids right now. Everyone's getting pregnant. It's just insane. <laughs> yeah. I've never known... <laughs> so many people I think it's like at 40 I mean it extends to the people that I mean if you know them and they're pregnant that's still people that you know that are pregnant you know mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. anyone end of last year into this year insane baby boom in my yeah. opinion yeah. yeah yeah me too for sure I think it's just that time right especially for us for women since we have we do have that biological clock at, at a lot of our friends are around the same age as us so it's like about that time that people are like really making the decision to do it or to not do it and both are totally okay yeah, this is totally true. I just hope that there's like nothing in the water. I'm like, what do I need to do? Make sure I don't get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so crazy. Um, all right, guys. Was there any um, other questions that we, that we wanted to go over from any of our peoples on social media? Yeah, actually, Mario asked Jen, what's your favorite Korean pastries? Hmm. <laughs> that's really specific like a korean korean one like like <laughs> like as in culturally <laughs> korean um otherwise there's when i'm in korea or something it's really easy to stop by paris baguette they have uh -huh. towns too there's they're pretty good i have a lot of like pastry shops like um like french style pastry shops in korea that i really like but i, I don't really remember their names um i have them saved in like a Google map, you know how you can make lists yes. and stuff. So I have them saved and earmarked there. One is called Ours, so I'll say that. Ours is in um, Gangnam, in, off of somewhere near Karosuki, and it's freaking amazing. So um, cool. But as ter in terms of like traditional Korean pastries, I'm not really sure, I don't know. There's there's like rice cakes, which is called tteok. That's mm -hmm. pretty good, I don't know. I don't know any, I don't know a lot of other ones, but. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, DJ Iron asks, we know you're Korean, but where were you born? In LA. <laughs> That's funny. Sure, um, yeah. Or I guess pe maybe people might not know that, but I mean, I was born in Lomita, like Torrance, basically. Yeah. Oh, Torrance. Torrance. Hello. They have all the good freaking food over there too. And that's still yeah. part of LA? That's, yeah. It's uh, County. LA County. Yeah. Okay, it's by, LA it's County. really close to the airport. It's where it's, Torrance is where the 405, the 110 and the 91 all meet. And that's mm -hmm. like the special special thing you can always access Torrance. So, yeah. all right. Well, we wrap this up, Jen. Do you want to give any of our listeners like any tips or any advice or anything that you want to just drop some like heavy gems on for the rest of the season? Uh, I don't know. You know, I just hope everyone out there is doing okay and making it through this difficult time. And um, I just want to uh, impart good vibes to everyone just survive you're doing it um i'm proud of everyone out there for surviving and making it through and hopefully um we'll make it out of this better people yes. so yeah that's about it awesome i love that amazing we could talk to you for hours it's been beautiful thank you so much for your time and sharing all your wisdom with us we hope yeah. you uh you guys all enjoyed and took a lot from this episode yeah. And you guys be sure to check out Jen's channel on Twitch called Lost Resort, where she talks to your favorite musicians about food, stories, and culture. Also, do not miss out on her latest album, Oasis Nocturno, on Apple. And she also has really cool merch at tokimonster.com. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to season three. Yes. And we love y'all. Thanks, Jen. Be sure to follow her. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.